So we're finally back to working on the Bronco here. Moving the rear axle. Finally gonna get the ARB in there. Got this side cut off. Gonna go over to this side over here and cut the rest of the U-bolts off. Um, they're kind of being a pain in the ass to get out, but we'll get her done. All right, so we're starting off the disc brake conversion, the trussing on this nine inch. Um, <clears throat> got the stuff over here for the disc brake conversion. Don't get too caught up about the paint on the rotors. That's just the way I like to paint them. Um, I paint them all the way, and then wire wheel off what part's gonna be contacting with the pads. That way I don't get any excess rust. Uh, these rotors are off a CJ7 Jeep. Uh, if you want to get them from the parts store, just go for a, say, an 84 CJ7 front um, discs, and that would work for you. This is just the standard um, axle for you, nothing special. Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually setting them behind the flange. Uh, there's some people that like to turn down the flange here um, in order to get the disc to clear on the outside. Uh, to me, there's actually not much meat on there to be turning it down a quarter inch to make it work. So I don't like that idea. The studs we're going to be using, this is a Dorman part number, 610-219. Uh, they're just the front um, studs for, like, call it a 84 Bronco like we're using. Uh, well, what we're building here, um, nothing too special. And this one's all um, sucked together. I'm going to show you how I do that here in a second. I guess my camera battery is dying, so hopefully it lasts long enough for you to see this. I'm going to start by setting the, the rotor on the back. Get the lined up there. I'm going to apply a little bit of oil to the start of the shank here. Help it go in there. Run it around and then lube up the hole as you're putting it in. They have a special tool for this, but a larger nut that slides over and clears everything. And then take your lug nut that you're going to be using. Start on there. Get your <coughs> air impact. Just make sure it's going the right way. Start going at it.
guess my other camera died, so we're back to the cell phone here. But I got this all sucked down on there. Um, got both of them done, so now I just need to take them down to the machine shop tomorrow. Um, have them press on the bearings. Uh, that way I can set it up in the housing over here uh, where I can weld on my brackets to get our, our calipers on there. And then once you got that on there, then we can go ahead and start doing the truss work. So I'm finishing up welding up these caliper brackets. I um, just pulled out my axle shaft so I can get around and do a full bead on them. I set up both axles and a, a third member in here to get everything square on how it was supposed to when it's actually going to be finished. Uh, then I went ahead and rigged up this setup with just a chunk of hose so I can hook up my um, compressed air to it so it would clamp down on the rotors. That way I could get my um, bracket where it needed to be and tack it on there. So right now I'm going to finish those up and then get some metal f for the truss set up. So I got my axle all set up here, um, strapped it down to a 3x3 box, three three box tube, quarter inch wall, just something I had laying around. Um, one thing I, when doing some research online, was to pre-stress it, so I put about an eighth of an inch pre-stress in it using these U-bolts. Um, and I'm going around doing stitch welds, um, spreading them out, taking some time, because I don't want to put too much heat into this. so. It, that way it will make sure it's not going to warp. Um, just kind of a slow process. Don't, just want to take my time. Anyway, working that out. Alright, so we just got done doing the truss. Um, got the backbone welded on there too. Turned out pretty well. Uh, time consuming, trying to do the inch beads at a time alternating, but it's well worth it. That way you don't warp your, your axle. Right now, we're gonna do work on shaving it. And you might be asking why do I have this bucket of water underneath here? Well, in order to get a, a level mark on here, I'm gonna take this bucket of water and this jack raise it up until I get to the point where I want my my shave to end and that will give me a nice mark all the way around here that I can mark with the felt marker and that will give me an even cut so it's not all uh, off to one angle or, or something like that. I'll take a few photos when I get it done. So I just got done welding in this plate for my shave kit here. Um, went ahead and bolted on a spare third member. That way I didn't get any warpage or anything. Got it all torqued down and everything so it hold it tight. Um, went ahead and did a nice grind job with the flapper wheel here. Um, that way it gets it nice and smooth so when we slide over stuff it's not hanging up on the welds. Try to get as most ground, much ground clearance as possible. I'm probably going to lift this back over, undo the third member, and do a little bit of welding on the inside. Just get good penetration, make sure it's solid. So I just finished up the fab work on this axle. Um, just did the mounts for my track bar. I got two lower brackets and then one upper one. When we get it in the rig, I'll show you how, those, how that's going to play out. Um, clean it all up. Pretty much ready for some paint now and went ahead and put a, a drain plug in the bottom make it easier to drain out the oil 